when shopping malls replace public pedestrian space as a meeting place for people, it's an indication that a city is ill. All shopping malls are the same everywhere. If they blindfold you and they put you in a mall in Bangkok or in Bogota or in Miami, you don't even know because all that get at the same temperature. They have the same shops now with the globalization. You don't see the architecture, you don't see the mountains, you don't see the trees. And in developing countries, shopping malls are almost clubs, country clubs, because the poor people feel uncomfortable going in there because it's like if I go into a Rolls Royce shop, I feel a little intimidated. And exactly that's what they are what they are for. A good city does not have shopping malls. It has people in going into the shops in the streets. It's not a matter of the weather, because you may have very cold weather and still in New York nobody goes into a shopping mall in Manhattan. This is perhaps the most famous sidewalk in the world, the Champs Elysees in Paris. Can you imagine us telling the French, you are a little bit stupid, French, because you have enough space there to park cars as well as for people to walk by. Transport. And I will finish with this issue. Transport is a very peculiar problem in developing countries because it's one problem that gets worse as we get richer. Most problems tend to get solved. For example, if we, are, we have three or four times the income per capita today, we can have better hospitals, better schools, better housing, better food, better restaurants. But transport, of course, will be much worse because we have more cars, more traffic jams. So at least with the model that we have, it's a completely non-sustainable model. Because clearly, it gets worse as we progress. The biggest issue with transport is low density. This is low density suburbs. Bogota and developing country cities have very compact structures. Not because we were great planners but because we did not have money to make highways and to buy more cars. But the fact is that if we had, if Bogota had the same density as Toronto, Bogota would take eight times the area it has now with the same population. So of course we would consume much more fuel, transport costs would be much bigger because the trips are longer, and we could not have high frequency, we could not have buses or trains going very frequently because nobody would take them. So density is the most important issue. For If we have a dense city, it works well with taxis, with bicycles, with buses, with trains. If we have these, nothing works well. But when we talk about density, it does not mean 40-story high buildings. We can talk about four-story high buildings like in Florence, or four-story high buildings like in Zurich, or these five or six-story high buildings like in the Netherlands. I mean, why do people want to go to these suburbs? Maybe they want green. Ironically, they want safe spaces for the children to ride bicycles, even though it's completely car-dependent environments. So maybe we can have higher densities, but providing people with the same things they are seeking in the suburbs. Very giant pedestrian and bicycle streets, safe for children to ride in denser environments. Lots of green, maybe greenways that would crisscross the city in all directions. Of course, suburbs are really bad for the elderly who cannot drive any longer or for any 13-year-old child anywhere in the world should be able to go by himself or by herself anywhere. In a suburb, they are totally dependent on their parents to take them. So, density. How to achieve density? In the United States and Canada, there have been many wonderful projects turning all the industrial areas into higher density areas. But I think we also need to demolish many houses in the suburbs, in the inner suburbs, to make higher buildings. This is painful, this is difficult. But I think it can be much more fun if we do a great plan, if we not only put higher buildings but make much bigger sidewalks, pedestrian promenades, bicycle ways. I mean, for density to be achieved in Canada, we require two things. First, we, want, we need people to want to live in denser environments, because if they don't want, but also we need regulations that allow neighborhoods to be demolished in order to have five, six, eight-story high buildings. 
Maybe people don't want that. But then it has a lot of environmental and all kinds of costs. This is the density we're talking about again. I'm not, we are not talking about 20 high. For example, in this greenish village street, we could have this street, could be just pedestrian. We could get rid of parking in one side, just make a giant pedestrian street with trees, and it would completely change the environment. Paris, see people like to live there, and you don't have space for cars, and still it's, it works. I mean, the square meter there is very expensive. Many people want to live there. It's not like it's impossible to live in environments with very narrow streets without uh, cars. Okay, let's go quickly to something else. This is Atlanta. In trying to solve traffic jams, making bigger roads, is like trying to put out a fire with gas. With all due respect, here in Toronto, they make a very big highway recently, about five, six, six, seven years ago. Do you know one city in the planet which has solved traffic jams making bigger roads? One, because what creates traffic jams is not the number of cars only. That's a small part of the problem. What creates traffic is the number of trips and the length of trips. So, I think this is in Canada, for example. The average time from home to work and back in Canada increased from 54 minutes in 92 to 63 in 2005. In Montreal, it increased from 62 to 76 minutes. Here in this graph, you see that the only city where this has been decreased is Vancouver, which is the only one which has not allowed highways to build through it. Only to increase densities and improve public transport. So, if we are going to build highways anyway, I think at least we should save space for buses some lanes for buses only, not necessarily just for trains. Traffic jams are not a problem, they are just an indication that a road is ripe for public transport. In developing countries also, we have a political issue. If we invest money, oh I'm sorry, if we invest money in this and do not invest money in this because money is scarce, what do we do with it? And this is not a phony picture, this is a real picture. Look, there is no such a thing as a natural level of car use in a city. If there was more space for cars in London or in New York, there would be more cars in New York or in London. If there was less space for cars, there would be less cars, as simple as that. So it's a political decision. Look at this picture in London. You see, there is more space for sidewalk than space for cars. Do you think they were able to do this because they asked permission to a transport engineer? No, this was a political decision. I am not saying how Toronto should be or how Canadian city should be. All I'm trying to emphasize is that there is nothing sacred about this. There is nothing technical. These are political decisions. You may want to make just a huge street without sidewalk just for cars, or a pedestrian street only without cars, and anything in between. But whatever you do is a political decision. Do not call, do not call some transport engineer to ask for permission.